This is strange because we have long hairs. Every other time when we've had long hairs, one or two or whatever, we were always polar. But this is one of the two that not only do we have no squeezing, we're also going to be non-polar. The up would cancel the down, the three and the plane would cancel each other. And then resonance right here. Sarah, how many? Zero. Zero. Very good. Okay, are we all right on that one? Yeah. Uh, typically on true on black pyramid. What now? Typically on a true on black pyramid. Isn't it uh, 180, 120, and 90 for as the uh -huh. And so why is it not that here? Because you've lost everybody on the plane. So you're not going yeah. from the top yeah. down to the okay. plane anymore because uh -huh. we pretend we can't see them. So you lose a whole bunch of angles. But that's going to be different with the different. Yeah. Oh. Let's go back. This table has a wonderful summary for you. Okay, less than 120, less than 180, less than 90. Okay, what's left here? Less than 180 and less than 90. We've lost over 20. Okay. And here, you've lost your 120. You've lost your 90, and all we have left is the 180, but it's right on the money. So the angle is based on the molecular shape. Yes. Yes. Excellent. A lot depends on molecular shape. Okay. Your polarity depends on molecular shape. And also your angles depend on molecular shape. Which is, yeah, not the orientation. That's going to help you. But your question frequently is, what's molecular shape? instead of just what's orientation. Okay, let's try our next one, and we're moving right into the next section. We have SF6. Okay, so, and did I see a hand, though? Mia, I just wanted to know, how do you know when it's less than? Keep your squeeze by a lone pair. Okay, let's run through this one together. I think it's on your lab 15. But what I would do, here would be my thinking process. I look at that and I say, ah, oh, sulfur's my central atoms, and I'm on high alert because of rule four. Rule four says sulfur can sometimes have more than eight. So if you look at that, we have to write ourselves a note, share at least how many? Well. Okay, now let's pretend we don't remember that. Our stroke of brilliance right here, we've totally forgotten. So we have an N and an A and a share. Okay, sulfur needs how many? Nikki in the back? Eight. Eight. And we have fluorines. Each fluorine needs how many? Alex? Eight. Eight. See, we're pretending we don't realize that that sulfur could violate. So what have we got? 48, is that 56? Check my man. Okay, now let's think available here. Liz, sulfur comes in with how many? Six. Okay, and I have six fluorines, and each fluorine comes in with how many? Nikki in the front. Seven. Seven. So we have 42 and six, 48. So that tells us to go, we think we should share how many, Hina? Eight. Eight. Okay, who wins, Hina? Well, well, so that means we trash that. Yeah. And we trash need. We do not trash that. So you just put sulfur in the middle. Draw a wagon wheel. Because your Lewis dot does not show you the shape. This <coughs> would appear flat. It doesn't show you the shape. It's bookkeeping. Okay, now, is that a finished product? Do you have any leftovers we ought to be putting on our sulfur, or is that it? Pedro? That's it. That's it, because we've used our 48. <coughs> um, so when do we, we know when to use a double bond and when, when we need to add a little bit? Okay, here when you say share at least 12. In fact, I cannot think of a time with rule 4 where you're going to have more than 8 that you will ever, in this class, see a multiple. And so it says share 12. Well, if I just spread out my 6 here and just do single bonds, there's my 12. And then this was less, so we know we trash that, so we can't go over the 12. Okay? Well, you know, you know, hey, wait, let him finish. What was the question when you, have a lone, when you put a lone pair 
Okay. If we had not used the 48. But if you have a count, I've got six of those guys, and each one is using eight. So six times eight. So as Pedro told us, we've used our 48. Okay. Now, Brittany, you had a question. Um, just gonna, like, okay. Nina, you had Okay. Let's head on then. When we look at this, Cassandra, how many atoms? Six. Okay. And lone pairs. Charles, how many lone pairs on your central atom? None. None. And so our number of things here, Sarah? Six. Okay, we've got a new shape, but you've seen it in your lab 15, that it's going to be an octahedron. And here's my generic octahedron. Have you built one? Does somebody have one handy? Okay, she's used a variety of colors, and that's just fine. But we have an up, and we have a down, and we have four in the plane. Does anybody have a trigonal by pyramid handy? Trigonal by pyramid. Okay, look at the difference. Here's when you have five. We have one up, one down, and three in the plane. Okay, here we have one up, one down, but we have expanded the plane to be four. But this is a much more symmetrical structure than is this. Because in this one, does anyone have this of all the same? Let me use that because it makes a better case. Okay, do you see this is one up, one down, and four in the plane? Okay, now if I rotate it, still the same thing, isn't it? And that would not have been true with a trigonal by pyramid. So here in the octahedron, all spots are identical. So later on when we have a long pair, it doesn't matter where we put them. Um, in this situation where there are no long pairs, there's not going to be a 180 degree angle in there, is there? Yes, there is. So you still count that 180, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. though there's something coming off that we can fire an x-ray and see all the different you things. You can see everything here. You still count that 180 all the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All three, right? You're you going to see. 90 uh, 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 that's it. Very good. Did you hear what Bruce said? When I got to, would get to the point about the angles, you got 180 because up and down. And also, if I turn the plane across the plane both ways, we got 180s. And then from the top to the plane is a 90. So we call it an octahedron. I think when I was quizzing you all, when I went around the room when you were working on this, we as chemists are interested in this shape because it has the six things around it. Well, octahedron sounds like eight. Where did they get the octahedron? Mathematicians did it, right? Uh, if you, like, pretend like it's like there's something built around it, that's on the side. Exactly. If this were made out of a solid piece of wood or plastic, it would be a square pyramid up here. And you would have one, two, three, four faces or sides. Likewise here, if it a pyramid made out of wood, you'd have four faces for a total of eight faces. So the mathematicians named it for the faces, not the points. And so our orientation is octahedron. This word is just like tetrahedron. You can say tetrahedron or tetrahedral. When you say tetrahedron, it's the noun. When you say tetrahedral, it's the adjective. And you should say tetrahedral arrangement. Likewise here, octahedron, that's the noun. Or I can say, this is an octahedral arrangement. And I use it as an adjective. It means the same thing, and you'll see them interchangeable. Okay, and as you've already told me, bond angles are 180 and 90. If we, yeah, molecular shape, go ahead. The same because there are no long pairs. And how about polarity of this thing? Nonpolar overall. But does it have polar bonds? Yes. Force, force, across and across. So, a wonderful true and false. This thing has polar bonds, but it is nonpolar overall. True or false? True. True. Okay.